Twice Born, the new inspiring and profound book about Ruho Okawa. How from being a mediocre ordinary child in the countryside, through diligent effort and inspiration and attacks from the devil, he was able to become a master. A monumental 1991 Tokyo Dome lecture, The Victory of Faith. He announced, I am not a human being, I am the law itself. He declared that he is Alcantara, the god of the earth. His true mission is to be the founder and leader of the next world religion. Discover your own experience of being twice born. Twice Born, the new inspiring and profound book about Ruho Okawa. How from being a mediocre ordinary child in the countryside, through diligent effort and inspiration and attacks from the devil, he was able to become a master. A monumental 1991 Tokyo Dome lecture, The Victory of Faith. He announced, I am not a human being, I am the law itself. He declared that he is Alcantara, the god of the earth. His true mission is to be the founder and leader of the next world religion. Discover your own experience of being twice born. Hello everyone, uh, thank you so much for joining today's uh, Sunday service. Uh, I'm Mari from Happy Sons Los Angeles and San Diego. Uh, today we'll be watching the uh, one of the episodes from Invitation to Happiness Season 3, uh, which was aired in a New York area a few months ago. And a lot of people really loved the seasons. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed today. If you have any questions, uh, anything, uh, please feel free to message us. And also, if you would like to receive the book, uh, please let me know. Uh, let me know, okay? Uh, so today, first, we'll watch the episode two called "What Is the Creator." And right after that, um, we will be practicing meditation but it's uh, more like a contemplation style. Uh, you will be listening to the lecture and please contemplate on what you hear. Okay, um, I, I hope you enjoy. And yeah, now we'll start the episode. Okay, see you soon. The following program is sponsored by Happy Science.
Hello and thank you for accepting our invitation to happiness. I'm Mariko and I'm here with my two friends. Hi, I'm Yushi. Hi, I'm Dylan. And we're here now with episode two, which is on the topic, the creator. What a grand topic. Yes. The creator. Uh, have you guys ever thought about the creator? Uh, maybe the things that goes through our mind is, is he there or not? Does he exist or not? The chicken and the egg theory. There you go. But not only that, in this episode, we're gonna be delving in so deeply with so much details that I think it's gonna just uh, blow your mind. Yep. Yeah, so this new sutra we talked about in our last episode, the true word spoken by Buddha, it uses this phrase Buddha, but it means more than Shakyamuni Buddha of India. It refers to the creator, mm -hmm. also the savior. So this sutra uh, encompasses all religions, all people around the world, not just Buddhist people. So to hear more about that sutra, let's watch the next video. There used to be the light in the great universe. The light is the energy of Buddha. People can live by this energy. And Buddha's energy has made human history. It was about 100 billion years ago when the plan to create the three-dimensional galactic universe was decided. At that time, I was not yet individualized, but I have memories of back then. 100 billion years ago, when it was decided that this three-dimensional universe would be created, all there was was solitude. Time and space did not exist yet. And without time and space, there was no one else to share in the decision and act on it. In this time of solitude, a thought arose. Let there be space. Let there be time. With these thoughts, I too took part in creating this universe during this long, long time of solitude. The universe is, in truth, made not of visible matter, but of invisible matter. What is this invisible matter? It is spiritual. Spiritual matter is what makes up all kinds of things. What is the identity or the true nature of spiritual matter? It is love. This is what I want to teach you. The universe was created out of God's love. There are a variety of life forms, such as human type, animal type, and plant type beings. Living in various galaxies and planetary systems, including Earth. But still, God's love resides in them all. You are a child of God, not because you are almighty and all-knowing, or you are invincible, or you can accomplish anything. You are a child of God, because love exists within you. Wow. <laughs> what a mind-blowing clip. Who has a memory of a hundred billion years ago. I think I read this in one of Master's books, The Golden Laws. He talks about how he can recollect his memory of how this universe was created because he has the access to the Akashic Record. For me, just listening to it, mm -hmm. I kind of felt like 
you're just uh, uh, being created. It's like such a deep feeling of the beginning or the source and you feel the love and you think, oh, this is how I was created. I was created with love and intention and, you know, pure preciousness. Mm. Last year in 2019, uh, in one of his lectures, uh, To the Age of New Prosperity, uh, in that lecture, we'll be watching this in the uh, future episodes actually, but Master said that um, I have three sets of eyes. It's an eye as a human being, Ryuho Kawa, living in this physical form. And then the second one is the perspective of him being a savior, a modern day savior. And then the third perspective, it's not on this physical world, but it's the perspective from the spiritual world where I means the creator, the spiritual part of him has been seeing this whole history from the beginning, the very beginning, the creation. So when he says I, ever since that lecture was given, I always check, wait, is this the human master Okawa talking about this? Or is it like the savior part of him? Or is it that spiritual part of him that's connected to God? Yeah, so the next clip we're going to watch is actually transcribed into this book called The Laws of Alpha. Mm -hmm. It was an hour-long lecture, and the transcript is in this book, but the part we're going to watch is about the creation of the history of Earth. So let's watch it. The plan to create advanced humans on Earth was commenced. Roughly 600 million years ago, Various life forms had already started to appear. When it came time to create the first human life on Earth, one option or possibility was to call back the Venusians who immigrated to other stars. However, the main plan was to create human life here on Earth first. A group of souls who no longer possessed physical bodies and had been residing in the Venusian spirit world were brought together to form an enormous ball of light. Then summoned to Earth in that form. The plan was to create from this light human spirits and human bodies appropriate for Earth. While it may seem like an incredibly long time by today's standards, 200 million years were spent carefully planning out. And materializing human spirits and human bodies suitable to Earth. Let me explain how it was done so you can visualize it. First, a form of soul appropriate for humans on Earth was designed. Then, as the first experiment on civilization, a few hundred of these human spirits were materialized onto Earth. I think that this happened nearly 400 million years ago. First human spirits who appeared on Earth by materialization did not possess the same physical bodies as we do today. In the beginning, the human body was semi-transparent. I'm not sure how to describe it. But human body-like beings of gelatinous, jellyfish-like material materialized. And appeared on Earth. Then, improvements were made on the physical body. 
by adding on new attributes essential for the life forms born in the Earth's magnetic field. Basically, all kinds of attributes that were suitable for life on Earth were added. In this way, the human body was gradually made suitable for Earth. They were also separated into men and women. The functions were divided in order to create a dualistic world. The assumption was that human spirits or humans would gain more fruitful experiences. Surviving, living, and experiencing a dualistic world where there are men and women. There are planets where men and women are not separated, meaning that those planets only have a single gender. There are also planets where a third or even fourth gender exists. Humans can be made to be that way. But in regards to Earth, the decision was to experiment on civilization by creating dualism. So, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but wow. And what amazes me, one, is, um, yes, we hear the stories of the Genesis in other religions, but not to this level of concrete, like concreteness. It's incredible how he knows not just the history of this earth, but he was also talking about other planets and the eyes of the creator, as you mentioned earlier, mm. these eyes are so big. They see all things. This is the power of the Creator and the proof of the Creator as well. Definitely. And it's interesting to know or think about why are we here on Earth now, though? And yeah, it's just kind of beautiful to be told these kinds of things so that mm -hmm. we can understand each other better. Not just understand each other better, I'm just gonna piggyback from that, but like you think about your life from a much grander perspective, so like you can look at it much deeper. Mm -hmm. It like kind of like pops you out from your daily life. What is the purpose of I, me living here on Earth, on this planet, with this kind of history? In the next part of the video we'll be watching, it's the same lecture, The Laws of Alpha, but he will be talking about the principles and the values of this planet Earth. Let's watch it. By separating humans into men and women, a principle where the separated attract each other was created. This principle of mutual attraction is called the principle of love. Originally, a single massive soul was called over from Venus to Earth as a ball of light. Then it was separated into men and women on Earth. The ball of light came as one and was split into individual souls. So there was a very strong tendency in these souls to reconnect with one another. Nonetheless, the direction I suggested then was to grant unique characteristics to humans. Each human being would be given a unique character so that each person could live individually. However, this doesn't mean that they should live alone. Each of them will retain the power to attract one another. As an instinct, they share from having been one. That's the power of love. As a result of individualization, humans started to show distinct spiritual and physical differences through the accumulation of experiences. Then, humans began to struggle between their original equality and the freedom to be a unique individual.
If everyone remained equal, there would be no progress. By only promoting freedom overemphasizes the difference. To the point that many instances where people could not work together occurred. That's why it gradually became necessary to have rules for how humans can live together on Earth. And for the laws or teachings to be preached. Many rules were made as well. The religions which spread around the world in later times were originally just the rules that were created for the humans to flourish harmoniously. More specifically, the meaning of religion was to produce rules that are suitable for each particular region or area. I'm so happy that the Creator gave us, gave us all our own individualistic characters. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure it must be so painful for all of you if you all had to be like me. <laughs> <laughs> right? And as you can see, we all have totally different personalities, and that's what makes this planet so beautiful. Human souls came to this planet on, as one big life form or one big soul energy, and we're split into multiple people. And they have the tendency to reunite with one another, right? Mm -hmm. So that's where the principle of love comes in. You know how all religions and like spiritual people, they say love is important or reflecting on yourself is important, faith is important. But those teachings, it's put in a totally different level now since we know how we were created. You have a piece of God in you. There's like no end to who's right and who's wrong in that sense, the morals mm -hmm. or um, mm -hmm. you know, different see. rules and who's, which country is better, what style is better. But when we base it on what's eternal and true and what's equal essentially in all of us, then it's infinite how goodness is or how we should be. And that's why the world is so chaotic right now. We don't know the fundamental traffic rules. But once we know this fundamental traffic rules, again, that means we will finally be able to work constructively towards peace. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're gonna be watching a testimony from two of our members who felt the love of the Creator and who found the answers to unanswered questions. Let's watch it. I would say that happy science is, in my opinion, the the only place that where you can learn, learn the truth about everything, about anything, about your existence. That this is the place where you can really learn what's out there, like what is the, the greater purpose of life and how God created us. When is he happy? When, when, when we are evolving and just learning why all the, why so many like uh, genius people or so many um, enlightened people were born in this earth? Like it gives you a clear understanding that God never, never left us alone. That He, He's always with us. He's always uh, wanting us to evolve, and that's why He sent all all those people. And I find that only here I can truly have a clear idea on how that works. Yeah, I guess my feeling was that I had lots of unanswered questions in my mind. So I'd been brought up in a mostly Christian country and I never, I really liked the teaching of love from Jesus Christ, but there were some things about Christianity that just didn't add up um, or didn't seem to be the complete picture of truth. So I still had unanswered questions and I was seeking for answers. That's why I was reading a book on Buddhism at the time that I encountered the laws of the sun. So my feeling at the time was like, wow, this is it. This makes sense. Yeah, and it doesn't conflict with Christianity. And this is the other missing pieces. And this is where we came from. And this is why we are born on this earth. And this is how we're supposed to live. Wow. Yeah, that's... That was my feeling. Okay. I want more. <laughs> Master Kawa's enlightenment's getting higher and higher, and we're receiving new teachings that we never, 
we never knew before. We can't compare them to something we learned before. It's something new. It's revealed for the first time to humankind. So I truly feel that I haven't completely grasped how great this really is or this being Alcantara. I don't know if I've completely understood exactly how great this existence is. So I feel there's like something lacking. So I try and do something to deepen my faith or strengthen my faith. Um, so that's a maybe long process and that keeps me interested and keeps me going and I think my life would be boring without happy science. <laughs> so I completely agree with Brian. <laughs> yes. Life would be very boring without happy science. You mm. have an understanding of why good things happen and bad things happen. Mm -hmm. So it's a really like a multiple angle view you get this totally new perspective that's not like dogmatic. Mm -hmm. Like his teachings allows us to freely explore the truth. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's watch two more lectures of Master, Awakening to the Power of Mercy and the Power to Spread Love. In the teachings of happy science, integration of all religions is one of our major concepts. This has been our aim from the very beginning of our foundation since all religions were derived from one fundamental source. Instead of emphasizing differences and fighting over them, we should understand and trust each other more based on the knowing that these teachings come from that same source. The desire to create a new utopia in this way has been a part of our movement from the very beginning. I also talk about how differences in people's race, religion, and culture are sometimes due to their different planets of origin. With a full understanding that these differences exist, we are all born as contemporaries into this soul training ground called Earth, where we develop new lifestyle patterns, civilizations, cultures, and philosophies. In an attempt to create ways of thinking, ways of life, value systems, morals, and religion, that is right for the people of Earth. It is for this reason that a variety of souls come to Earth. This is not done to cause confusion among humanity. Instead, it is to urge people to awaken to new possibilities by seeing each other's differences. By understanding our differences, we realize that we still have room to change. It is not as though everything was created perfectly out of a uniform mold from the very beginning. Humans were not created all uniformly in a robot factory. People are all born with different intentions and different goals. This is why differences exist in each person's life goal and their life mission. Accepting these differences and understanding other people are also an aspect of love. Happy science was not created to bring confusion or chaos to this world. It was established to explain the existing differences to help people understand each other and to live in harmony thereby creating a great new utopia. The teachings you are given now are neither a rehash nor a compilation of past religions. They go well beyond such things of the past. That is because they are the laws of the beginning and laws of the ending. I will reveal everything. I will reveal everything on the condition that more people in the world believe. That is the condition. 
It would be possible to reveal everything only when there are more and more believers. If you wish to learn even a single more truth while you are alive, please make new fellow members. The truth is that who you are is being revealed to you for the first time in history. We're learning for the first time who we are, is what Master Okawa just said. Moreover, it's not just like who we are on the surface, but it's who we were, who we've always been. It's the eternal part of ourselves that's our Buddha nature, or our divine nature. So, you know, we're here in New York Temple, uh, really close by walking distance, there's World Trade Center. When 9-11 occurred, there was a famous uh, professor who wrote that that's, this is the reason why I don't believe in religion. But now I want to say to that professor and to all the people in the world who may have thought like that, now is the reason why we need to know happy science. It's like a religion for the future. It brings us into the future, into an ideal future. Who would be the savior now is someone that can do that. And that's by understanding our beginnings, uh, our differences and our commonalities and what makes us human, what makes us mm -hmm. children of God. And So uh, we really invite you to come to this temple, uh, get these books and take a read. It's so fantastic. So we really hope to see you here at our temples. So once again, thank you for accepting our invitation to happiness. In our next episode, we'll be exploring the topic of exorcism. Oh, wow. Yep. It's going to be a very interesting topic. I cannot wait. Yes, you don't want to miss it. So see you next time. The preceding program was sponsored by Happy Science. Ikimonosubete. の自分自身は一体どのような存在であるのかということに悟ったならばもっともっと強い強い力が腹の底から湧いてくるのです。
I uh, really want to say to you uh, that uh, you have the kingdom uh, of God within you. Think deeply inside of you. At the time, uh, you'll find something beautiful in your mind or uh, something uh, good in you or something eternal. In religion, faith leads the bridge from the man to God. If you have ardent and deep faith in God, at that time your mind will combine to the heart of God in heaven. Uh, it means you have goodness in you, or you have beauty in you, or you have truth in you. During you uh, keeping peaceful mind in you, always good faith. At the time, you are nearly to God, or you can be, in some meaning, the neighbor to God. You are the person what you are thinking about and what you are thinking all day long. You are creator in you. You can imagine a lot of things in you and what you imagine in you, it's a possibility to design and build and realize the plan or uh, your dream. You can dream, you can make uh, planning in your life, and this planning will lead you to the future, and you make your future. The point is the possibility of thinking. The possibility of thinking is the starting point of to find the kingdom of God within you. If you can think about the kingdom of God in you, it means you can find your own destiny or your own final goal. Then this final goal shall be accepted by God. In other words, God will bless you in your dream or your final goal. 
If God welcomes you or your dreams, it will be possible. You already have received uh, everything in you. You can, of course, imagine the, uh, your miserable situation or your inferiority complex or your disappointed self-history. It is easy to say, uh, but at the time, same time, you have golden life with you. You already received your own life. This life means your soul. If you have soul, a soul comes from the God's will, and it means you have responsibility in this world to make this world utopia instead of go to work himself. You can love uh, other people. It's uh, one of the power of God. And you can have mercy on over the miserable people or who suffer from illness or in great difficulties in in a country conflicts nowadays, you can have compassion for them. It's one of the power of God. And you can give hope uh, for them and you can assist and aid them uh, to rebuild their own countries and share your dream with other people of foreign countries. It must be one of the power of God. And of course, you study a lot in your life at the time, you naturally seeking to get truth, real truth. This tendency is included in your life. All these thinking attitudes are belonging to God. You have the kingdom in you, within you, and you have the power of God uh, within. This means the possibility of dream. Dream of God. Dream instead of God.
Thank you so much. Uh, please end your contemplation. How was it? Um, I hope you enjoyed Master Kao's lectures excerpts on what is the creator and uh, the contemplation. So um, this is it. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. And if you would like to know more about Master Kao's teachings, please um, leave comments. I will answer to you um, as soon as we finish uh, this video. Uh, but also, um, if you haven't watched the newest lecture called With Savior, which was given on December 8th, uh, please watch it. Um, you can message me or uh, contact your local Happy Science Temple. Okay? And lastly, um, all over the world, um, I know so many people have been suffering from coronavirus and coronavirus-related uh, recession. Um, we pray for your health, safety, your family's safety and happiness. Uh, if there's anything we can do, please let us know. Uh, we are here uh, to pray for you. And also, we have lots of spiritual way to fight against coronavirus. Um, so I'm going to show you a six-minute video. Um, as of now, the seminar has finished. Uh, but uh, if you have time, um, please watch that uh, video. Uh, I talked a little bit about uh, the music called The Thunder, which um, is the strongest weapon to fight against uh, coronavirus because the coronavirus is uh, spiritually, it's the position, the mechanism, how you get infected is same as spiritual position. Uh, so yeah, let me play that video. The following program is sponsored by Okay, sorry, uh, it will start in about 10 seconds, okay? Hold on. Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well and healthy. Uh, today I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, how to survive in the coronavirus recession uh, because we, this book just came out. Uh, how to survive the coronavirus recession. And as you know, uh, Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing well and healthy. Uh, today I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, how to survive in the coronavirus recession uh, because we, this book just came out. Uh, how to survive the coronavirus recession. And as you know, uh, coronavirus, coronavirus is spreading rapidly within this um, LA County especially as well so I'm sure um, there are someone you know have been suffering or have suffered from coronavirus but as you know Master Kawa he gave a he gave a lecture with Savior on December 8th and he said he wants to save everyone members non-members who've been suffering because we have the power, or well, we have the spiritual cure to save them. And this is why we want to reach out to as many people as possible. And I wanted to introduce that, or remind you of that. So in this book, in afterwards, Master Kawa said, uh, I'm gonna read the entire afterward. afterward. In this book, I'm not saying that you should regard the prevention of coronavirus infection, do what you feel you have to do. However, even if you stay at home for one or two months, the coronavirus pandemic will not disappear from this earth. It will spread to countries all over the world with second and third waves to follow. You will need to survive by living with the coronavirus. 
Basically, each of you must strengthen your immunity, produce wisdom, and restart your economic activities. If not, large businesses, nations, and municipalities will fail, and only hatred and sorrow will remain. There is still no effective vaccine at this time, so please go back to the power of faith once again. Possession, possession by a group of tiny viruses is basically no different from possession by evil spirits. If so, you can drive them away using the power of God or Buddha. With this book, you must fight against grim reapers. So as Master said, the infection, infection of novel coronavirus is just like other infectious um, disease. So it's a possession. It's, it's just like a spiritual possession. So what you need is the stronger power of God or Buddha. And in order to do that, Masukawa has given us a CD like this, The Thunder, and also The Exorcism, which are also available to download on iTunes and other platforms. I will attach the link um, in the comment section. But also, he's given us this, a ritual prayer called Prayer for Defeating the Infection of Novel Coronavirus Originated in China. Uh, if you, it's a $100 donation. Uh, if you would like to take this Kigan or ritual prayer, um, I, I can do it any day, every day. So just uh, message me or call us at uh, the temple. So in order to survive the coronavirus recession, uh, in this book, Master Talks, for instance, you need to strengthen your immunity by de developing your willpower living cheerfully and training your body and also as i just introduced he said happy science music and movies keep you away from spiritual disturbances and viral in viral infections and also the happy science kigan the ritual prayer is an unknown attack against viruses so from the viruses view when you take the kigan unknown strong light or strikes the viruses and they just need to go away. So, and also, uh, if you would like to know more about, so what's gonna happen in the future, or how long does, is this going to last? Or, or if you have any questions, Master Kawa, with his great mercy, he's given us lots of spiritual readings from high spirits like Shakamuni Buddha, Jesus Christ, Edgar Casey, and a sp space being as well. And also some other doctors and other space beings. And also if you want to deepen your wisdom on the positions, there's a book called The Position. So I recommend these books. If you would like to receive these, uh, I can mail you out to you, so just message me. And lastly, um, please, please download the music and listen to it every day. Just like a, just like you take shower every day, this is a spiritual spiritual shower that you can take. But also, I'm uh, reciting the true words spoken by Buddha, reading Kyoten's like this. Kyoten's mean, means Master Okawa's books, sacred books, because those have strong lights. And just by reading, you can gain peace of mind and deepen your wisdom, which will protect you from coronavirus and any negative influences. I'm here for you. Uh, I'm here to pray for your health, safety, and happiness. If there's anything, any concerns you may have or any questions, please feel free to contact us and um, I hope to talk to you soon. Thank you so much. Hello everyone. I hope you're all doing well and healthy. Uh, today I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, how to survive in the coronavirus recession uh, because re this book just came out. 
uh, how to survive. Oh, okay. Thank you so much. Uh, sorry for the repeat uh, just now. But um, yeah, uh, if you have any questions, um, please chat me so I can answer you or uh, send us email or call us, okay? Um, I hope you all have a good holidays with your family and I pray for your safety and happiness. Thank you so much and I'll see you soon. And oh, and I'm sorry, I, I would appreciate any, your, any of your comments or suggestions, uh, topics that you would like to know more about. I appreciate it. So thank you so much. Have a good holidays. Thank you.